I would like to copy the philosophy of the obvious. We take the obvious for granted. What we call obvious is a lot of prejudice, concepts, distorted faith, beliefs, and so on. But in order to get and to understand the obvious, we have first to get hold of the obvious. And that is the greatest difficulty. Because if we all want to be clever or hide or uh, our intent to bring something worthwhile and so on. You notice what difficulties you all had to deal with the obvious. And the neurotic is simply a person who does not see the obvious. But in order to deal with the obvious, you first must get hold of the obvious. <clears throat> now the most obvious factor we encounter in our sphere is the fact that we have two levels of existence, an inner world and an outer world. And the inner world, often called the mind, looks as if it's something different or opposed to the outer world. And the gestalt that forms in our fantasy has to coincide with the gestalt in the outer world in order to come to a conclusion, to cope with life, to finish the situation, and so on and so on. If there's no connection between the two, then you have the person who lives on anastrophic and catastrophic expectation all the time, imagining that he will be rich and uh, famous and so on and so on, or if you have your catastrophic expectation, you imagine all the time that you'll be punished, people won't like you, and so on and so on. And the lack of checking out, the lack of getting the parallel between the two amounts to the many distortions and real catastrophes in life. Now there's one region where we are really insane, where we have a real private life of insanity, of an inner life unconnected with the external world, or apparently unconnected. And that is the dream. The dream appears to be real. As, as long as you dream, you're really in that situation. You really experience this as being your very existence, and especially if you are a self-frustrator, then you dream in terms of nightmares. You want to cope with the situation, achieve something, and again and again, you frustrate yourself. You prevent yourself from achieving what you want to achieve. But you don't experience this as that you are doing it. You experience this as some other power is preventing you. Now we started yesterday with the shuttling between being in touch with the external world and getting in touch with yourself. And once you got in touch with yourself, something usually opened up. And if there's a direct connection, direct communication between the self and the world, you function fine. Then your potential is available. You can call on your own resources. But if you try to withdraw, and you can't withdraw to yourself, but just to that nucleus, that psychotic part in ourselves, that fantasy life, like the computer, the conceptualizing, the explaining, that is why. 
or as the Freudian do, the withdrawal to memories, to the past. Then you never can get to the true self. This Freud never got to the self, always got stuck with the ego. What we can do to understand and make full use of the dreams is to realize that this inner world of dreams is also our life script. And it's much more explicit way of our life script, not a more cryptic language. And just as in our everyday life, we encounter people, we cope with people. So we do in our dream. Only in that is the beauty of the dreams. The dream fulfills many more functions than just this. But we can start with the fact that we encounter other people, other things in the dreams, <coughs> and that every bit of the dream, every other person, everything, every mood is a part of our fractionalized self. Now this is so important that I like to reformulate it again. We are as we are today, fractionalized people, people who are split up in bits and pieces. And it's no use to analyze these bits and pieces and cut them up still more. What we want to do in Gestalt therapy is to integrate all the dispersed and disowned, alienated part of the self and make the person whole again. A wholesome person is a person who functions well, can rely on his own resources, and can resume its growth wherever the person gets stuck in its growth. So what I would like to do is, again, to start <coughs> on the basis of dream work. And I have to say this, when you meet another person, and this person feels the need to tell you a dream. Then this person will tell you the dream as a story. Last night I dreamt ta 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 ta, I was ta 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 ta, and I did ta 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 ta, and so on. Now this is the first step, the story. The second step is to revive the dream. And we do this by making just a grammatical change. Instead of telling a story, we tell a drama. And we do it simply by changing the past tense into the present tense. I am climbing a mountain. There comes this and this and this and this. This is the second step. The third step is we play the stage director, we set the stage. Here's the mountain, here am I. You notice, slowly we get into the alive performance of the dream. And uh, often we recover quite a bit of a, the vividness of the dream. We begin to realize we are the author. We are the stage director. So we can go then to the next step and do more. We become not only the author, the stage director, we become also the actor and the props and everything that is there. And then we see there are plenty of encounters possible, plenty of opportunities for two things. One is to integrate conflict and the other is to 
re-identify with the alienated parts. If we have alienated parts from ourselves, if we have disowned, we re-own them by re-identifying, by becoming those parts again. We have to undergo another metamorphosis. We have to become the mountain. We have to become the villain, the demon, and realize those are all projected parts of ourselves. So we encounter for the first time the idea of projection. Projection is a disowning of a part of ourselves which then appears in the outer world, even within our personal world, and cease to be a part of ourselves. Now the reowning of many of these parts is unpleasant. We don't like to realize that we are a sewer or a policeman. And this is where the moment of learning to suffer comes in. To suffer from the moment the idea that we might be a sewer or policeman. And then suddenly it appears that there are valuable energies somewhere hidden in those projections. And we can assimilate this and make them our own again. There are much more, many more things to the dream, which I don't want to mention right now. But the one thing is, you don't have to work through the whole dream. Even if you only take a dream and re-identify with a few of the items, each time you assimilate one item, you grow, you increase your potential. You begin to change. So let's first work a bit on such little bits and samples. Uh, Let's go through the four stages with a few of you just to get the idea across that we can do this systematically and something will happen. Who wants to volunteer? I was on this mountain, kind of like the hills back up here, and there was a friend of mine, a close friend, and he was... uh, sitting on his knees and he seemed okay and he had a pot a blue plate and some kind of a bowl just kind of arranged in a row good now take the second step then the whole section of the dream I guess that's not the whole dream get the whole this same section again in the present tense Now, Chris is sitting, and uh, you're sitting right in front of me, uh, and on your knees, and right in front of you, I see a pot, and uh, a blue plate, and uh, a bowl. Shall I go on with the rest of it? No, I just want to take sections to get it. Now, set the stage. Make a play out of this. Here's your stage. <coughs> Where does he sit? Where's the plate and so on? Yeah. Uh, Chris. Here's Chris. Here's the pot, uh, the plate, and his bowl. And then in the background, uh, the mountains. And then there's kind of straw, uh, dried grass around. And, uh, I'm right here looking. I'm, I was walking up this trail which continues around the back of the mountain. And I just stop. Yeah. Can you do this once more? I think you're a bit lazy. Get up and really set the stage. Show us the whole drama. Yeah. Um, <coughs> trail is coming up here and it continues around the hill. Where, where? Pardon? Continue around the hill. Later, Chris. <laughs> okay. 
there he is again. Don't look at me now. You produce and you talk to the different actors. You're now the producer. Well, what's happening? What are these? The pot, the plate, and the bowl. Uh, what are you doing? Watch this. He takes the plates and the whole thing just starts shooting them around like a, a nut in a shell game. It starts going around like that. Watch this, Russ. Now, what do you think's under this pot? The blue plate. What do you think's under the blue plate? The pot. Okay, now you become all the different actors. You become your friend, you become the plate, you become the trail. And if you have difficulties, you start, if I would be a trail, I would have this and this kind of existence. And let me warn you, there's only one great mistake you can make. It's to interpret. If you start interpreting, you're lost. You made an intellectual Freudian game out of it. And at best, you'll be filing away interesting insights in some intellectual filing cabinet and make sure nothing real happens. Just don't interpret, just be that thing, be that plate, be that part, be that friend of yours. So, I'm Chris. Stop it. And watch this, Russ. See what I can do. See if you can keep up with it. It's kind of catchy. Now, for instance, if you would already be in the work, working on him, I would tell him now, turn around. And be Russ. Turn around. Be this, yeah, be the same, same guy, and play this to the audience. <laughs> Watch this. See if you can keep up with it. It's pretty damn fast. Now, what do you think's under this pot? The plate, right? Okay. What do you think's under the plate? The pot. And what do you think's under the pot? The plate. All at the same time. Now, you noticed how different he behaves from the timid guy yesterday. You feel comfortable in that role now? I feel comfortable and invasive is all hell, yeah. yeah. So, now be the different other thing. Be the trail. I'm a trail. Okay. What is your purpose, trail? What's your shape, the condition of? Oh, I'm a trail. I, I'm on this mountain. Uh, I'm an ice trail. It, uh, it's comfortable, so I'm not too hard to walk on. Say this again. I'm not too hard to walk on. But, uh, there's a lot of nice scenery along me. Nice places to go, so a few campsites. But, uh, I go up to the top of the mountain. People walk on me up to the top. Say this again. People walk on me up to the top. I See, you didn't interpret. Something came through. Russ is walking on me. But he stopped. He's with Chris now. But he's still on me. Good. Now we have here a definite encounter, which we can use. Sit down here. We interrupt the dream now for some encounter with. You are the trail, and there's Russ. And you both talk to each other. I describe. You're walking on me, I know. You're not too bad. Your boots are kind of heavy, more than most. 
Well, I think they have to be. They to assure good traction, you know. You, you wear me down. And uh, you've been walking on me an awful lot, fella. Uh, with heavy boots. Why don't you get off me? Why don't you... Why do you need a fucking trail? Uh, shit, you don't need me. You got your big boots, go do your own thing. Thank you. If I get off you, if I get off your trail, I might get lost. I might fall down. You're safe. You're even. It's all been arranged. Somebody else is going there and, you know, like I say, I can't get lost. All right, I want to interrupt here. You know that something's beginning to happen already. You feel that you're being stirred up. Yeah. Just, we just approach a little bit of a segment of a dream, did a little bit of work. Actually, I believe if one takes one dream and completes its work, that's all the therapy that's... Only what usually happens whilst you are already developing more of your personality in the dream will come up which sends you another existential message. This for me is the meaning of the dream, an existential message. It's not just an unfinished situation, it's not just a current problem, it's not just a symptom or character formation. It is an existential meaning, a message. Concerns your total existence, concerns your total life script. <laughs> 